the hits just keep on coming for Chris Light and CNN. And I'm not talking about the musical hits. I'm not talking about all those woke songs that make the charts. At this point, CNN would just be happy to make any chart. But you know those classic woke songs I'm talking about? The songs that get those wankers ready for primetime spanking? The classics like I Kissed a Boy and I Liked It by Donnie and His Lemons. Oscar the Magic Wiener by Andy Cooper. Last but not least, Man, I Feel Like a Woman by the one and only man-feeling woman, Wallace Chrissy. Even though we still have... I don't know, about 36 hours left in the first quarter of 2023, the record low ratings set in Q1 at CNN have already been released. I guess Nielsen has determined that even with 36 hours remaining, there's just no way for CNN to climb out of this hole. So far in 2023, the woke shovels, they have been busy at CNN preparing burial plots in the woke cemetery. My inside sources tell me, Donnie Lemon, he has already requested the plot next to the donut diva himself, Brian Stelter. Over the last few days, I've had many of you guys reach out to me wanting me to discuss the media reaction to the tragic shooting in Nashville. As usual, reaction in the mainstream media, absolutely disgusting. They're not concerned about the victims, the real victims. No, 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 no. We must be cognizant. We must be sensitive to the gender identity of the shooter. NBC News, ABC News, pick your woke media outlet. Their coverage has been insulting. But you can make a strong case. The worst coverage of this tragedy in Nashville could be found at CNN. I seem to remember Chris Light promising to take CNN in a new direction. This is the new and improved CNN. We are dedicated to delivering the hard news. It seems to me the only hard thing being delivered at CNN is the woke wiener. Because the partisanship, the exploitation of tragic situations to further the woke narrative, it's at an all-time high at CNN. I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about here in just a second. First. Let's get into these god-awful ratings. According to the New York Post, ratings at CNN for the month of March down 61% when compared to last year. But that's okay. That's okay. There is nothing to see here, according to a CNN spokesperson. CNN is a top five cable network in total viewership. The impact of our journalism and the overall reach of our brand, it cannot be measured by a single metric. Top five cable network? CNN, top five cable network. Where? I am sure CNN ranks in the top five in Belize, where they have a total of six channels and the handful of houses with power and running water. I'm sure CNN dominates the ratings down there. But here in America, I don't see CNN in the top 25, much less the top five. Hell, most of their programs don't make the top 50. You know what kind of networks say our impact and reach can't be measured by a single metric? You know what kind of television networks say that? Television networks that aren't drawing ratings. Last I checked, in the television business, your reach, your overall value, it's measured by one thing and one thing only. Ratings. Unless, of course, you're Bamani Jones. Bobo, he's kind of an anomaly. He's one of those rare cases where they're rewarded for failure. The 61% ratings decline in March. That number is actually cause for celebration when you look at ratings in the key 25 to 54 demo. From January to March, CNN's lost 73% of its viewers in the key demo. They're averaging just 124,000 viewers in prime time. How's their competition doing? Fox News, once again, dominating. This month, Fox brought in 2.1 million viewers every night in prime time. MSNBC, 1.1 million. CNN, 473,000. <laughs> 473,000 viewers. Someone please explain to me how CNN ranks in the top five amongst cable networks. Let me show you one of the many, many reasons people have turned off CNN. Sometimes when I'm prepping these videos, I'll have my TV on in the background. Some days it'll be on FS1, some days ESPN, some MSNBC, others it's on Fox News. Monday morning, 
I actually had Fox News on in the background right as news was breaking of the tragic shooting in Nashville. Harris Faulkner was breaking the news. She had a panel on the show. The mood was somber. They were expressing their concern for the victims, the parents, the families. The atmosphere was appropriate. It's what you would expect from a cable news network in a situation like this. The following morning, Donnie and his lemons covered the story. His partner, Caitlin Collins, was there. Hey, it's me, Katie Rue. I love Donnie's lemons too. I didn't see Poppy Harlow. Perhaps she is still in grief counseling after Don informed her that she was well past her prime. They invited two experts on the show to discuss the shooting in Nashville. Now, I use the term experts loosely here. The only thing needed to become an expert at CNN is a loose caboose and a strong affinity for the cucumber. One of these experts chooses to identify as Juliet Kayum, G-U-C. KC, what the hell does G-U-C mean? You know that new trend in business where people put those stupid letters after their name? I used to see it all the time on LinkedIn when I had a job. It looked like a giant alphabet convention. Bob Singleton, CMP, Dick Small, T-I-N-Y, Rosie Garden, M-U-F-F. This trend has also become popular in the community of shitfucks. The G-U-C behind Juliet Kayum stands for Gender Unconfirmed. She must be having problems with her health insurance. Those gender confirmation appointments, they can get rather expensive without health insurance. Now, I know I'm not a qualified biologist, but my eye test did confirm that Juliet is a woman. Now, watch this for yourself. This is the type of coverage you get from CNN. Roll the film. So the police are identifying the shooter as a trans woman, would actually be a trans man. So there's sort of a misidentification there, but this is all new. I'm just wondering, the identity of being a transgender person and also being identified as a woman does this pose any sort of difference or difficulty for the for police because it's not typically a woman, regardless of how they are identifying? So there are a couple yeah. of things here that are different and that we are going to have to talk about and, and delve into. And we have to be sensitive about it to the extent that Audrey Hale identified as a woman. We do not see mass shooters uh, who are female, especially in particular school shooting uh, murderers. Those, that is that is uh, uh, this is actually, I think, the first time that I can remember. I know I was on air yesterday st stating the same. And so that uniqueness is obviously going to go to only one part of this. We don't own guns in this country. Guns own us at this stage. And this is where we have to now focus on an important part of, of an agenda, which includes mental health, protecting our kids, fortifying schools, but also the connectivity, which is a certain kind of gun. I, I you know, look, pronouns, pronouns do not kill children, right? People with guns kill children, and it's going to be a distraction in our coverage and keep us from what we now know, which is each of these cases has a similarity uh, more than any difference. Was that supposed to be woke comedy? Was that a skit from Saturday Night Live? There is no way Chris Light considers that to be hard news coverage. First of all, Donnie Lemon opens the segment by expressing his concern about the shooter's misgendering. These cops are guilty of misgendering. Police are identifying the shooter as a trans woman when they choose to identify as a trans man. Um... Who fucking cares? Do you think parents of the victims really care about the gender identification of the person responsible for taking the lives of their kids? Do you think the parents really care about proper pronouns? To make matters worse, Juliet made sure to point out that we all needed to be sensitive to the gender identity of the shooter. I don't know about you guys, but when I was watching all this unfold, I was worried about the kids. I was concerned for the parents, the teachers, the staff, the victims. Once again, the woke media is exploiting this tragedy in an effort to push one of their favorite woke boner words, gun control. You just saw in that clip, Juliet insinuated that focusing on the shooter's gender, focusing on the Christian victims, all that is a distraction from the real issue. Those guns, oh, those evil guns. The other day, I was watching Michael Knowles, and he made some excellent points. 
Michael Knowles works at the Daily Wire. I think the Daily Wire, that's the one owned by Ben Shapiro. I don't watch Michael Knowles on a regular basis, but he caught my attention the other day because he was being threatened on Twitter. But he made an excellent point. He pointed out the fact that guns have not changed all that much in the last hundred or so years. Gun ownership was actually higher in 1923 than it is today. Laws are a hell of a lot stricter today than they were back then. He spouted off all these dates when certain firearms were invented. Again, he highlighted the fact that guns have not changed. Society has changed. The culture, people have changed. The media has worked tirelessly to infect this country with the woke fungus. If you want to know what happens when a person becomes infected, go look at Keith Olbermann. If you want to know what happens when an organization becomes infected, Go look at CNN. The end result, always the same. Decline and misery. Right now, Chris Light is excited because Charles Barkley, Gail King, they're, they look to be heading to CNN. They're going to commit to doing one show a week in prime time. <laughs> that is not going to solve the problem. Gail King is a ratings disaster at CBS. I think I saw something the other day. CBS is paying Gail King something like $12 million a year for ratings that put them in last place. $12 million a year to be a huge embarrassing failure. I mean, isn't this a great country? What other country in the world can you make $12 million to come in last place to be a failure? Charles Barkley might. He might give CNN a minor ratings boost. But one hour a week of Charles Barkley, that is not the answer. They've already tried this with Bill Maher on Friday nights. It ain't working. Since Bill Maher's joined the network, ratings at CNN, they've actually gotten worse. The solution is the same solution I told you before. It's the same solution I mentioned last year when Chris Light took over. It's the solution that he promised but ultimately failed to deliver. It's rather simple, but the execution, difficult. You've got to eradicate the woke fungus. I know it's easier said than done, but that is the only way CNN can be saved. MSNBC has the market cornered when it comes to appealing to the wanker spankers. No one can get the wanker to reach climax better than the wicked wig of the woke. There is not enough of a base audience for two woke cable news networks. If Chris Light wants to save the network, CNN, they need to be more appealing to normal people. Instead, they seem to be headed in the opposite direction. But give me your thoughts. CNN sets record low ratings in the first quarter. The way things are going, I expect the trend to continue through quarter two. What did you think of their coverage of the tragedy in Nashville? I mean, am I the only one that thought it was inappropriate and distasteful? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.